Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting up these Primaris Outriders. Now, first things first, these models suck to put together. It, it really is difficult. You have to fully assemble them to have a good chance with them. Their legs, so the legs on these models, are actually a part of the outside chassis. So you can't just paint the bike separate and then the Space Marine second. No, you have to basically assemble the entire thing. And this gets in the way of a lot of detail and a lot of... It's just ridiculous. This this is a poorly... It looks good, but from a painting aspect, this is pretty irritating. But I've assembled them up to the point where I would... I've assembled them fully because I can't really do anything about it. And they're not going to have any gold trim, so there is no problem with uh, attaching their backpacks or anything like that. And I textured the armor as well, except for the helmets. This is one thing I've learned is that it's best to leave the helmets as clean as possible. So all their body armor is textured, the bikes are not. Now I'm going to try something. With the flexible modeling paste, I'm going to cover the entire base with them. Now I want to make tire tread tracks on it, so I'm going to do... I only do one of them with a thick coat, so I try different levels of coats. A thin coat, a one with a bit of a medium, and one with a lot slather, slathered on. While the Liquitex putty is still wet, I give it a pinch of rocks, and I try to avoid where the holes of where the tires go into, because these rocks are just going to get in the way. And after that is done, I then liberally apply sand all over. After they have been dried, and I have marked where the holes are, I then take the front wheel of one of these things, and then I start tap 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 tapping in a line, on the putty itself to create like the trend tire marks. Now note that this does look good on the one that has a lot of thick putty because the treads can go in deep. The problem is, is that when I did this, I did it in a perfect line, which is of course because the tires are in a line, but you can't really see the treads. You can only see the treads in the back. So looking back, I should have done like a tread across horizontally on these bases to make it look like these guys are like doing circles and donuts around an area so the treads would have been visible. I then apply them onto the bases so that it'll dry with them on to be a perfect flush fit. And then I leave them overnight to fully harden. And now with Liquitex matte varnish, I'm going to apply this very softly all over the models. Now this is a terrible varnish for like painting because it it just it's not matte, it's just not that good, but it is thick and it'll seal up all the sand and the rocks in there. So just cautiously spread it all out and it'll seal all the uh, sand and rocks. Now this is going to take a long time for it to dry, however with the power of a cheap hair dryer this will only take like a few minutes at most. And since I showed you how to make the bases so far, I might as well go all the way. With Doom Bowl Brown, we're going to coat them in a base layer of Doom Bowl Brown. And then we're going to take Vallejo Pigment Dark Slate Gray and we're going to apply it liberally all over. And then in order to seal it in, we're going to use AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Now, the powder is still pretty wet, so what we're going to do is we're going to cautiously apply it uh, very softly, and if it gets rubbed off too much of the high areas, we'll just apply some more pigment powder onto that and it'll seal in. Looking back, I probably should have just mixed this AK Interactive, the matte varnish, with the powder so that it applies uh, very well and I didn't have to do this step extra. And once that's dry with the power of a hair dryer, we're going to use Mornfang Brown and we're just going to edge the bases. Like, two coats will be fine. Done and done. We're not doing anything great, but we just want some bases that don't look ugly in comparison to the model. They don't, uh, they're not the center of focus or anything, but they don't look bad in comparison either. Also, on the left is the one with the most putty and you can see the deepest ridges and then it goes from the most putty to the least putty all the way on the right. And it looks like having a lot of extra putty adds a lot more flavor to the base, where the one all the way on the right is just pretty flat and plain. And well, moving on, we're going to go with Iron Breaker and we're going to coat the entire model in this. Now I would use an airbrush, but I feel like it's a little bit of an overkill.
And now using Abaddon Black mixed one to one with Nolan Oil, we're gonna apply this to the model. Now I've just fully come to accept that you're gonna have to do this twice. You're going to apply this all over the model, including the bike itself and the wheels, as well as afterwards, we're going to do a dry brushing of Iron Breaker. And once that's done, we're gonna go back and do a second coat of Abaddon Black and Nolan Oil. It, it just seems to be required. And then we're going to dry brush it again, but very lightly this time, focusing mostly on the edges. And in the end, I noticed that some places aren't as dark as they should again, so I just go back with a little bit of Nolan Oil and apply it onto the armor. However, in the end, I do use the airbrush. I take some Nolan Oil and I directly put it into the airbrush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it at like a f uh, downward angle. Or I'm, gonna sp I'm basically going to try to add shadow to the armor plates, the armor plating itself, not the of the bike, not the uh, Space Marine. And I'm going to try to add some shadow and depth into the plates, or the armor plates. All right, now that that's done with Rhinox Hide, we're gonna paint the belts. Since it is like the further most in, it's best to do this step now. So we're gonna paint the leather belts that go all the way around. All right, I assume it's leather. And now with Mornfang Brown and Nolan Oil, we're gonna paint his little ammo packs and gun holsters. We're gonna start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown. And once that's done, we're gonna coat it in a thick layer of Nolan Oil. We don't want it to pull too much, uh, but we do want it to be visible. And once that's done, we use the, I guess you could say the pattern left by the Nolan Oil, and then we highlight based off that. The deepest parts will be Nolan Oil, and the lighter parts will be Mornfang Brown. With Doombull Brown and Nolan Oil, we're going to paint this tiny little canister he has there to make it distinct from the uh, others. So with Doombull Brown, it's going to be a base coat of that. And then once that is done, we're going to apply a thick layer of Nolan Oil. We don't want it to pull too much, but we want it to be visible. And once that is done, we are going to then uh, highlight the ring around the edge and the majority of the body of that little canister with Doombull Brown. All right now, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're gonna paint a helmet, the Purity Seals, and their guns and swords with this. We're gonna start by giving all of them a base layer of Corn Red. And once they all have that, what we're going to do is we're going to mix a 50-50 mix of Corn Red and Mephiston Red. We're not going to apply it to the Purity Seal, but we're going to apply it to everything else. We are especially going to apply it to what the helmet. Like, I'd say 90% of the helmet is going to get covered. Only the deepest, darkest recesses and the, like, folded edges of the crests of the helmet will not be uh, painted. And once that's done with pure Mephiston Red, we're going to paint like uh, 70 to 80% of the helmet, as well as the ring of the purity seal and the center, as well as the edges of the gun, uh, the red parts of the gun. And now with a one-to-one -one mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint ah, like the edges of the helmet, the gun, 
not the purity seals, we're not touching those with this. And so you want to focus on the finite edges, the sharp lines and stuff of the helmet and the gun. And then with Pure Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to do the very fine edges of the gun, the helmet, and the purity seal. A dot in the center of the purity seal and like 60% of the ring of the purity seal. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint the purity seals. We're going to start off with a base layer of Steel Legion Drab all over. Then once that's done, we're going to take a fine highlight brush and we're going to paint the edges of the paper, the creases in the paper, and wherever you think like most of the light is hitting the paper. And once that is done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply it all over. And once that has dried, we're going to take the Bane Blade Brown again and apply it to most of the edges of the paper, the creases, and such and such. Less is more, but use your own judgment. Alright, while painting I noticed that I completely forgot about the guns in the front and their swords. So I went back and did the process all over again. With a base layer of corn red I painted the swords and the, not the barrels, but like the cases of the guns, red. I wanted the guns to be red so it would be distinct and add more color to the front of the bike. And then going straight to Mephiston Red, we are highlighting the edges of the, well, the squares, mostly. Basically, like, I'd say probably 80 to 90 percent of the box, or the gun boxes are going to be edged like this. And we're going to cover, ah, uh, maybe 60 to 70 percent of the sword in this. The corn red's only going to be visible in, like, the heart of the back of the blade. I don't know how to describe it, but... And then with Pure uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint the very edges of, well, of the, what are the other these are? These guns, their box cases, I don't, I don't know how to describe them because they're so weird. Uh, paint the complete edges of the boxes. And then as far as the sword, we're going to paint the very fine edges. Um, make a good note that you really have to have good brushes for this. You really need good quality brushes and ones with very fine points, very refined. Uh, good brushes will allow you to get better at painting. You need better tools. And now once that is done, we're going to go with Iron Breaker. And we're just going to paint all the silver metallic details. We're going to paint all the gun barrels this. We're going to paint the very tips, the edge of all the uh, teeth on the swords. I'm going to paint various parts of the helmets, metallic, the exhaust ports on the back, and like these small spots on the wheel. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Golem and Flesh Contrast Paint, we're going to add like wear and tear to the exhaust ports and such. We're going to coat all the exhaust ports on his backpack with Skeleton Horde Contrast, the uh, metal parts, as well as the edges of the exhaust ports on the bikes with this. Okay. 
And then once that is done, we're going to take the golem and flesh and we're going to apply it to the insides of each of the ports and like the very ends of the exhaust ports to the bike. Alright then, with Fenrisian Grey and White Scar, we're going to paint the white parts. We're going to base layer the shoulder pads, the center of the backpack, and, and that's pretty much it with Fenrisian Grey. Now, I'm only using Fenrisian Grey because this is what I got. I need Ulthuan Grey, because that's a better uh, color for layering for white. And then once that's done, apply White Scar White all over. Now with Warpstone Glow, Snarsnake Green, and Beal Tan Green, we're going to paint the eyes. Now one key thing to do is to make sure the paint is watered down enough so that it flows very easily. And you only want it on the very tip of your brush. You don't want it in the main body, you just want it in the tip. And we're going to start off by doing a base layer of Warpstone Glow. And once that is done, we're going to take a Snarsnake Green, making sure it's watered down enough, and we're going to try to fill in the Warpstone Glow. Now this is a process. We have Beal Tan Green because essentially sometimes mistakes happen or it's not aligned. And the Beal Tan Green allows us to essentially reset, to restart. So normally I would just use the Warp Sun Glow and the Snarsenic Green, but accidents happen. And you fill in the eyes with Beal Tan Green as needed. And then you retry to highlight again with the Snarsenic Green. And this is a back and forth process. And I did it well with the two helmets I had except for one eye, which I couldn't do because that shoulder pad was in the way and it made it hard for me to get the brush strokes right. Since I think I uh, spilled a little bit too much onto the helmet itself with the eyes, I'm gonna go with Lead Belcher and I'm just going to like highlight the area around the eye. This is a dark enough metal that'll kind of match with the armor. And so this will clean up the eye that I kept missing up. Alright then, with out of the way, with Cadian Flesh Tone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Keyslip Flesh, we're going to paint the face of the guy, or the sergeant. Now, we're going to start with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. And once that is done, we're going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Skeleton Horde Contrast and water, and we're going to apply it to the face all over. We don't want it to get too uh, thick and flowy, we just want to make sure it's enough to cover. And once that is done, we're going to take the Cadian Flesh Tone, and then we're going to re-highlight everything, except for the deepest, darkest recesses. Make sure you use a very fine brush for this. Once that is done, we're going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Keyslev Flesh, and then we're going to highlight the most raised areas, and as far as the top of his head, we're going to paint like uh, straight lines from left to right, and this just looks good in the end if you do it this way. And now with Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint the wheels. We're going to coat them first in a layer of Nuln Oil to darken them and make them look darker than the rest of the armor. And once that is done, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade to make it look browner, used, grimy, dirty, in comparison to the rest. I decide that there needs to be like holes in the barrels and the exhaust ports, so I take Rhinox Hide and I just paint circles on the exhaust ports and the gun barrels. It's not too extremely different than the rest of the area, so it doesn't stick out too much, but it's like, it's there. And now returning to the main failure of the Indominus, Indominus box set is the lack of decals for Black Templars. 
So I have to make do with what I have, and I look and I have an old Space Marine vehicle transfer sheet which has two Black Templar X's on it, or crosses, and then I take some stuff from the Indominus box set like these uh, Crusader seals and stuff like that, and I just make do with what I have. It's unfortunate, the lack of proper decals really drags this project down because it's, it's like a sore thumb on everything else that sticks out. However, I did realize that the shoulder pad uh, is going to have a white uh, decal and I can't have that so I'm going to have to paint a base layer of Chaos Black or Abaddon Black on it so that it shows through and then I can apply the white decal on it. Now the overall thing I'm doing is I'm placing Templar crosses on the basic two dudes and the commander is going to have like a command skull and like assault vehicle uh, transfer sheet on it. The Crusader pads will be on their right shoulder pad, and the left will have uh, Assault Marine on it. I, I actually don't know like the proper... I have a feeling I'm going to get chewed out for that, but I don't know their, uh, the proper uh, decals where they're supposed to go on these guys. But I'm making do with what I have. Normally in imagery, these guys would have Black Templar crosses on both their shoulder pads, but I can't paint symmetrical crosses on both sides, so that is not happening. I, it's sad, but I really wish I had more Black Templar crosses. And now we seal the model with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish. Now, with the Ultra Matte, we're going to apply this two coats to wherever the decals are on the shoulder pads, and we will apply one coat to the decals that are on the uh, bike itself. Now, this is going to change the appearance of the decals to make them look like just blend in. And then once that is done, we're going to then take the anti-shine matte varnish and we're going to apply it to wherever you think the model is going to get grabbed. We're going to apply it to the main bulk of the bike, we're going to apply it to the bottom legs, the arms of the models, the backpacks, the top parts, just wherever you think the model is going to be grabbed, we're going to apply the anti-shine matte varnish. And this thing will bring out metallics because even though it says anti-shine, it actually has a metallic shine on it. And now we shall begin assembly. We're going to super glue the models onto the bases. And that's pretty much it. I do recommend doing a few dry runs first because it's a little finicky. And then we're going to take Abaddon Black and we're going to paint the shoulder pauldrons pure black. And then with Vallejo liquid copper, liquid gold, old gold, liquid gold, gold, and liquid silver, silver. What we're going to do is we're going to paint all the metallics. Now they have the crusader symbols on their left and the little uh, skull on the helmet. We're going to start off with liquid copper coating that. And then once that's done, we're going to go to a layer of liquid gold, old gold to highlight that. And then once that's done, we're going to go with liquid gold and we're going to highlight that little cross further and we're also going to paint the uh, eagle or the chest piece with it. And once that is finally done, we're going to take very little amounts of silver and we're going to highlight it, just like dots for that. And as far as the uh, chest in the center, we're going to highlight the edges. We're basically going to, it's sort of like dry brushing, it's over brushing. It's not going to be that much paint on the thing and then we're just going to... Uh, rub the side of the brush onto the edges of it and it'll stick out. And then with Warp Stone Glow, Snarsenic Green, Lauren Force, Ungor Flesh, we're gonna paint the little buttons in the control panel on here. So you can use any colors you like and I paint the uh, major, uh, was it, data pad thingy with Warp Stone Glow as a base. I use Lauren Forest for some of the buttons as a base. I use Ungor Flesh for some of the buttons. Now, this is just, it is your choice. You can do whatever you like. I don't put much thought into it. And I do one small highlight of Snarsnick Green onto the edges of the panel because it's the most obvious and basic one or most visible one. And, well, there you have it. Done and done. I hated building these. This, these were the hardest ones to build. It's just because it's so anti-painter. 
I'm meaning to see uh, the things about the Indominus box set. They say it's for they say they say it's for uh, people who are used to the hobby. Uh, it's a mix because it's this is this is for beginners. This is straight up for beginners. They said it's for people who are used to the hobby, who are into the hobby. Uh, no, this is a beginner box set. These models are pushed to fit. They're not really friendly to uh, painters, essentially. Uh, assembling them after painting them is very difficult. These guys in particular, their legs are not attached, are, are not separate things. They're part of the chassis, which makes painting them very hard. But, whatever. Alright, now, as far as rating my work, I'm going to give myself a... I'm going to say 6 out of 10. Now, one point is definitely lost because I just don't have the decals, and it's a sore thumb. I mean, the decals, they do look good, but there's not enough Templar crosses, and I think I got them wrong. Also, on assembly, like you can see some cracks in the center of the bikes and stuff where I couldn't get it to fit all the way because it's just kind of rough or finicky. And one of the negatives of using super glue, you gotta jam that sucker in immediately, otherwise it'll seal part of the way, and you can't go all the way and make it all flush. Uh, apart from that, there were some things that were very good, like that guy's face, the, 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 was it, the sergeant's face, he looks good. That was really good. Like, I was surprised at how well that turned out. Now, I didn't showcase it, but I actually applied the varnish, uh, the AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to his face, and it looks good. That's probably one of the best faces I've painted. It looks really, really good. I'm going to use that recipe more often. The only thing that is not good is, from a thematics standpoint, He's a space marine, and he looks like he serves Slanesh with that fine face of his, that baby smooth face of him. It's just ridiculous. But, I well, I paint the model as they come. I mean, according to the service studs on his head, he's at between 51 and 99 years of service. So, what can I say? And Primars are relatively new. I doubt this guy's been in action over 100 years. I doubt it. But, the red helmet, the red, I did much better this time. The swords look great. The helmet looks great. I bit the bullet and did it the long way. The long, slow way, which... It's like six layers of paint, but it, it turned out well. The eyes on the uh, helmets turned out pretty well, except for that one eye that had a stupid shoulder pad walking away. So there was a lot that was done well, and there was a lot that just didn't do well. Uh, well, what didn't do well kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. The assembly... The problem with uh, trying to get everything right, so... If you paint everything very well, any mistakes and stuff, even though they're not that bad, they become glaringly worse in comparison to everything else. So what normally wouldn't be that big of a deal when uh, things are painted well, these mistakes start to stand out even further, and that is kind of the problem. And, well, overall, it was a good 6 out of 10. These are pretty cool models, and I enjoy them. Alright, next week I'm going to be moving on to the finale to the Primaris Captain, and he is going to be a showcase of everything I learned, and he's going to, I'm going to go all out on him, top notch. Alright, like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you want to subscribe to see more, more will be coming, uh, comment if you have anything to nitpick or whatever, and I'll see you relatively soon. Bye.